The year is 1992, the heart of the golden age of 2D games. But on the horizon, whispers are heard of a new era, with more Ds than ever seen before. And most of those whispers come from PC players who have just gotten their hands on Wolfenstein 3D. Though there were technically other FPS games before it, Wolfenstein 3D was the first with full-fledged, fast-paced, real-time graphics that could run on your household computer. The excellent programming of John Carmack meant that while other 3D games moved like this, Wolfenstein was more... Later, dudes. Let her rip, hang pen. This was possible in part because of Carmack's use of ray tracing to only render what will be visible to the player on screen, instead of rendering the entire scene. And this technique is such a foundational aspect of game development today that it's hard to imagine a time when it wasn't the standard, but Carmack's work helped make it a reality in 3D. This fast, aggressive game about shooting Nazis with Blood effects and skeletons hit the early 90s market square on the head. It was violent and dark in a way that no game had ever been, and it struck a chord with PC gamers. It popularized the shareware model, where the first episode is released for free as a demo. Shareware would become the default release method for FPS games on PC for the rest of the 90s, thanks to Wolfenstein catching on like wildfire. This was also one of the first games with mouse aiming. It's actually kind of cute the way they present it here. Like, sure, you can use a mouse, but what kind of weirdo would do that? Unfortunately, the game itself is not great to play. All enemy weapons are hit scan, so you get hit as soon as the gun goes off. There's no dodging projectiles here, and even if there was, you can't dodge while aiming, because strafe is on a toggle rather than dedicated buttons. Holding the strafe button down switches you from looking mode to strafing mode. Not being able to strafe and aim at the same time keeps Wolfenstein from feeling as kinetic and dynamic as we expect this genre to be today, and it limits the scope of its enemy and level design. And these enemies can do a lot of damage. Enemy damage is randomized based on range, so a single enemy hidden around a corner can turn you into blood pudding in two quick shots. Since you can't clear both corners before the enemy can get a shot off, and because you have to survive the whole level rather than just one encounter, no health regeneration or med drops here, only set items in the level. You really can't afford to be getting shot in the back even once, let alone twice if you're not quick on the draw. Wolfenstein 3D is at its most fun when you can full auto unload into a group of Nazis, but the game lacks the tools to create varied situations like that. The last levels use mazes to try to make navigation more interesting, but mostly the game just stages traps. This makes the optimal strategy playing around doors. Peek your head in, duck back out, then wait for the Nazis to line themselves up. It's a game about patience and pre-firing angles, because showdowns with enemies at close range too easily get you killed. Of course, good players will tell you that running and gunning is the optimal way to play, but the game doesn't do a great job of pushing that experience onto the novice. I only felt like I was good enough to really get the game and consistently have that fast-paced action by about episode 3. To help you get through the sometimes punishing gauntlets, the game is loaded with secrets. Secret rooms hide weapon upgrades and much-needed health and ammo. But 
finding secrets means mashing your face against every random wall that looks at you funny. This is Legend of Zelda for NES level secret hiding, and it's not engaging. Actually, some of these secrets are telegraphed quite nicely, but a lot of them? And if you run out of resources or fall into an ambush, it's back to the start of the level with barely any ammo. But wait. Why would I ever let the game reset me like that when there's such a generous save load system? This game even has limited lives and bonus collectibles for extra lives. What is all this doing here? Why would I not just load the game? I suppose a no-load restriction would make a decent challenge run, but all of this stuff just feels awkward and pointless in a normal playthrough. There are little bits of good design sprinkled throughout Wolfenstein 3D. Some teaching through level design here, some environmental storytelling there, but most of what's there is just the same handful of enemies and textures repeated ad nauseum in only barely different arrangements, all overlaid with way too few tracks from a frankly terrible soundtrack. Oh yeah, the music I used earlier? It's from Herzog's Phi. This is what the music in Wolfenstein 3D actually sounds like. Get psyched, the game commands, and then plays this. Can I please get a different song? I've been listening to this song for so long. I'm sorry I asked. In 1992, Wolfenstein 3D was a shock to the PC gaming scene, and a feat of engineering. It would be years before any other developer would catch up to the engine Carmack made for Wolfenstein, and thanks to John Romero's laser focus on gameplay that felt as fast as the engine, it fundamentally works as a game. Overall, though, it has a lot of shortcomings that keep it from being more than a novelty today. But it did give us Mecha Hitler. And Ghost Hitler? I don't know, I called him Dracula. <laughs> a mobile version of this game might actually work better. No mouse or analog stick means phone controls would be easy, and levels are that perfect pick-up-and-put-down length. Wolfenstein was considered super well-optimized when it came out 30 years ago. At this point, this game could literally run on an actual toaster. You can still get the original shareware release of Episode 1 for free on shareware sites. It does require DOSBox, and that you understand how to use DOSBox. I don't recommend paying money for this game without trying the free episode first. Oh, also, dog violence warning. As we all know, Wolfenstein 3D was only the beginning for id. Next week, I'll be talking about the game that changed the industry forever. Can I please get a different song? Milo, you okay over there?